No Coward Soul is Mine by Emily Bronte No coward soul is mine No trembler in the world's storm-troubled sphere I see heaven's glories shine And faith shines equal, arming me from fear O oh God, within my breast, almighty, ever-present deity, life that in me has to rest, as I, undying life, have power in thee. Vain are the thousand creeds that move men's hearts, unutterably vain, worthless as withered weeds, or idlest froth amid the boundless main, to waken doubt in one holding so fast by thy infinity, so surely anchored on the steadfast rock of immortality. With wide embracing love, thy spirit animates eternal years, pervades and broods above, changes, sustains, dissolves, creates and rears. Though earth and moon were gone, and suns and universes ceased to be, and thou wert left alone, every existence would exist in thee. There is not room for death, nor atom that his might could render void, since thou art being and breath, and what thou art may never be destroyed.
Cryogenic by Sridhala Swami. Let's suppose it is the man who waits for the woman to return. Let's suppose it's been 20 years or 30. In all that time, through all upheavals and sorrows, and who knows, perhaps a few joys, he holds himself ready for the moment when she will return. While she goes on adventures and becomes lined with life, or perhaps takes on large burdens on behalf of many people, he is perfect and cold. He is waiting for her. One day, triumphant, she returns, expecting to find many things changed, but some things, at least, just as they were. As with Odysseus, she expects she will know him by his old scars and learn about him by his new ones. But in the twenty or thirty years she has been away, the world has left no mark on him. Nothing acquired, nothing changed. He is just as she had left him. Perfectly preserved, he knows nothing. What can he tell her about truth or reconciliation? To my daughter in a red coat. New York, 1959. A poem by Anne Stevenson. Late October, it is afternoon. My daughter and I walk through the leaf-strewn corridors of the park in the light and the dark of the elm's thin arches. Around us brown leaves fall and spread. Small winds stir the minor dead. Dust powder, the air. Those shriveled women stare at us from their cold benches. Child, your mittens tug your sleeves. They lick your drumming feet, the leaves. You come so fast, so fast. You violate the past, my daughter, as your coat dances.
I'm Jill Armstrong and until last year I was a Bi Fellow at Murray Edwards working on the Collaborating with Men research project investigating the effects on women's leadership of often accidental gender bias in workplace culture. It's thankfully increasingly easy to think of successful female leaders in the world of work. Amongst the fellowship and alumni of Murray Edwards, there are many leading academic thinkers and also leaders from business, from the public and third sectors, from the professions, from the creative industries and so on. Female leaders of all ethnicities bring diversity of skills, leadership styles and thinking. And research tells us that this enhances performance and boosts creativity, innovation, ethics and reduces the risks associated with groupthink. There's a book coming though. Women leaders are still in the minority in many fields, even fields such as the law, medicine and the civil service where women form the majority at middle level and have done for decades. It's still remarkable when women leaders have the highest profile. The award-winning film Portrait of a Lady on Fire springs to mind as being remarkable in having only female actors in leading roles, a female director and a female cinematographer. Evidently, there's still much to do to achieve equality of opportunity and equal access to power in the world of work for women and especially women of colour. The Collaborating with Men research programme started because we realised that most men saw diversity and inclusion as a woman's issue and men's voices were missing from the debate. There are many supportive feminist men who hold back in changing their own behaviours or the systems operating in their organisations because they worry about giving offence or getting it wrong if they do speak out. Many men just don't know that women face more challenges to achieving their ambitions. This happens because most people believe that they treat everyone on merit. They don't see the many everyday things that happen over time and mean that women get fewer opportunities to show their merit and potential. Things like being interrupted or talked over in meetings so that her voice is silenced and she isn't credited for her contribution. Or being given fewer of the high profile assignments that make a reputation. Things like not being included in the socialising that happens around work in which connections are made with those who have the power to offer you opportunities or being given feedback that's not clear or actionable, such as a woman being told that she's not showing enough confidence or enough gravitas without explanation of what changing that would look like. What's needed is unity of purpose amongst all genders and awareness about what to change and how to solve these problems to get to a more equitable place. This is what the Collaborating with Men research aimed to support by working with men from many different fields. Ideas about what to change and how include these five things that we can all do. First, seek out people who don't look like you or obviously share your background and be curious about them and their experience. Shared understanding is the first step to inclusive behaviour. Second, advocate for talented people from minority groups when they aren't in the room so they're considered for opportunities or high profile projects. Third, when invited to speak at a conference or on a panel, ask who else has been invited and if necessary, encourage the organisers to have a more diverse slate. Make your participation contingent on that. Fourth, when you see someone being talked over, stop the interrupter and invite the interrupted to finish their point. And finally, fifth, learn and practice a few phrases to use to call out accidental or overt sexism or racism when you spot it. Having practiced ways of starting the conversation as an ally makes it more likely that you'll feel comfortable enough to step in. You'll find many more recommendations in the Collaborating with Men reports on the college website. I'll finish with the inspirational words of Amanda Gorman, the impressive American National Youth Poet Laureate who stole the show at the inauguration of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade but in all the bridges we've made. Thank you.